All right. From the most impressive two versions of the most impressive watch of the year, possibly the most Bollywood and talked about watch of the year was the Zenith DeFi Lab. Now, this one threw us all for a loop because it took a technology that we'd only seen in prototype form from De Bethune. Well, actually, I think they only got it to the theory stage with Resonique and the Genicond regulator from Valshay Manufacture. And all of a sudden, from a combination of LVMH's houses, Guy Simon at Tag Heuer, Ublo with the case material, and Zenith with the final execution, we finally got a harmonic oscillator made in entirely of silicon, powered entirely by a spring. So yes, this is traditional watchmaking in a form you have never seen before. And I have to say, mission accomplished. This was about as much exposure and publicity as you can get from 10 watches, which is all that will be built of this series. I do hear a production version is coming. That said, what is it? Well, it's basically the old idea behind the Bulova Accutron takes something with a natural frequency. Bulova used a servo motor and a tuning fork with a battery. Zenith is using a silicon oscillator powered by a modified traditional escapement. It actually looks like a pinwheel and a spring. So what Bulova achieved with a tuning fork and a battery, Zenith is sort of achieving with a spring and silicon. Now, this is an interesting concept. It's a standout, and I will say this, on one hand, Jean-Claude Viver got people talking about a brand that desperately needs word of mouth, has a grand history, and I believe a grand future, but they needed some sort of a spark, and I believe that is it. Also, because the DeFi Lab system does appear to be something that can be mass-produced at a reasonable price, these are going to get into the hands, not just of the guy who purchased the Exalted 10, but of real collectors who want to buy sub-$10,000 watches. That is what I hear. And it lessens Zenith's dependence on the aging El Primero chronograph caliber. It's good to do one thing and do it well. It's better to do many things well, and I think that this points the direction to that. It also gets Zenith back to its roots as a manufacturer. Before that, watershed in 1969, the El Primero, if Zenith was known for just two things, it was known for being a manufacturer and it was known for winning chronometry trials. Well, mission accomplished. This thing's supposed to achieve deviation of one third of one second per day. Very impressive with a mechanical movement. In terms of the manufacture, well, watch this space. Right now, this is a lot of adopted technology from outside of Zenith brought in from LVMH corporate. We'll see if they can bring this in-house and make it truly a Zenith watch. All that said, challenges do remain. Consistency, can they maintain the buzz with rank and file models? When everyone has one, does it remain special? Other issues. Brand identity. The look of the watch is Ublo, as is the case material. We already know that TAG supplied the underlying resonator technology via Guy Simon. Is there a way via traditional watchmaking to bring this into the family, but also find perhaps a way to hand finish these silicon parts and this foam metal case? Is there a way that traditional brass and gold and steel and platinum and rubies, and yes, Traditional lubrication oils can continue to exist in a lineup for old timers like me who like the belle horlogerie, the traditional way of doing things beautifully. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping Zenith finds that balance. If they do, they will be by far the standout, not so much of this year and maybe not of the next, but they could be the brand of the next decade if they find a way to strike the balance between today, tomorrow, and yesterday.